welcome to the pretty girl lounge where you can ask me anything and i'll answer your questions but if you have any questions just write them down in the comments and i will get back to you guys soon with this new series so this is a quick video and i want to answer another one of my subscribers questions and they asked me to, to act to make a video about why does it bother people that we have our own inclusive spaces and I can only guess the reason why. I mean, think about what we deal with in our real lives, how people sabotage, try to sabotage us for no reason, how they try to exclude you from the club, but still want to be in your face. Like they want to exclude you from the table, but simultaneously still wanting to associate themselves with you, right? That's just what we have to deal with as a community of exoticals in general, or as pretty girls in general. That's just kind of what comes with it. Like, that's why I made the video, More Pretty, More Problems. Because it's just like, for some reason, when you, being beautiful, first of all, it triggers people's emotions, whether that's in positive direction or a negative direction, whether that's jealousy as a negative, or you know envy or admiration or even stalkerish behaviors we have to deal with all kinds of craziness because of how we look and i think because i i read a reddit somewhere that somebody said tyla blowing up is triggering her body dysmorphia and from somebody who does have who had and, so, and coming from somebody who has dealt with body dysmorphia I can honestly say that it does trigger an emotion within you when you do see somebody that you see as very attractive. And for people with body dysmorphia, that, by, since I've been healed, I learned what healed me. And it's more of you suppressing a part of yourself and it's just being reflected out there somewhere to the point where it triggers you, if that makes sense. It's basically projection. So when you suppress a part of yourself that you deem not okay, like for me, for example, I grew up not thinking that I was pretty. Other people would tell me I was, but I never believed that I was in my own self. You understand? So that created body dysmorphia because I didn't understand what people were complimenting me so much about and so in awe of me about because I didn't, I, when I looked in the mirror for so many years, I did not see the same thing unless I had makeup on. That's the only time I ever saw myself as pretty when I had makeup on, even though I didn't need makeup. I never needed makeup because of my skin is so smooth. It's not like I have to wear it. I just, it's a security blanket for me because it makes me feel prettier. And so once I learned what projection was all about, it made sense in my situation because being healed on the healed side, on the other side of being healed, looking back, yes, I did suppress a lot of that, that I didn't feel beautiful. So because I suppressed it and kept it in my body and hid it, and it, I kept it so deep inside, anytime I would hear the word beautiful, see somebody beautiful, it would trigger me. It would tr literally trigger something within me that makes me angry. And it's just, I'm gonna put a video up of explaining projection in a better way than I can explain it by this guy named Eric, Aaron Agby that I follow. You guys should follow him if you're spiritual because he talks about the law of one and he breaks it down like you're a kindergartner. I swear he breaks it down. So I'm gonna put a, clip of projection and a better explanation now projection is typically seen as a negative thing and it certainly can be but in the purest sense we are very fortunate that our egos project our unconscious and suppressed beliefs onto other people because otherwise we literally wouldn't know that they existed if you want to know what areas still need balancing within yourself then just look at how you're viewing other people and that will tell you your patience with another is your patience with yourself, and your irritation with another is your irritation with yourself. And so this is the beginning of understanding what projection really is. 
The first thing to understand about projection is that it is literally impossible to see anything other than the contents of your own consciousness. So you are either projecting a form of love onto someone or a form of fear. And these are literally the only two options. So everything that you experience can only be interpreted according to your internal reference frame. And that internal reference frame then dictates what kinds of things that you are a vibrational match to for the law of attraction. Each of us have been socialized by whatever type of an environment that we grew up in. And this environment has conditioned us in certain ways. So as we grow up, we begin to form relationships with our family members and later our friends who unknowingly begin to split our consciousness apart into different fragments by making us feel like certain aspects of our personality are acceptable and other aspects of our personality are unacceptable. And so we naturally begin to dissociate from these aspects that we deem unacceptable. And this disassociation creates a split within our consciousness that eventually becomes what we normally call the shadow. For example, a child might grow up with a father who is very rigid and old school in his thinking. So anytime he catches his son crying or expressing his emotions in a way that the father deems unmanly, he aggressively tells his son to shut up and stop crying because real men don't cry. The father in that scenario is projecting an aspect of himself which he has disowned onto his son. This causes his young and impressionable son to feel ashamed of his emotions and repress any desire to express them in front of others. This rejected aspect becomes a part of what Carl Jung deemed the shadow self. I personally like to call it the lost self. All of us have aspects, both positive and negative, that we have rejected in this way and that lie in exile deep within us, begging to be expressed. Since energy can't be created or destroyed, it has to go somewhere. The energy these aspects create by crying out for attention must be offloaded somewhere. And so the ego uses that energy to project those aspects that we hate onto others in order to keep us unaware of their presence within ourselves. Pretty genius, eh? When we make any aspect of ourselves not okay, the ego perceives this as a threat to our survival. And because the ego is literally the survival mechanism of our brain, it buries this undesired aspect deep within our subconscious mind where it believes that we won't find it. And this is because long ago in our evolutionary past, our status in the social hierarchy was everything. The top members of the social hierarchy would get the best mates, the best jobs, the best food, the best shelter and protection. And so any aspect of our personality that the social hierarchy deemed as unacceptable would be of paramount importance for the ego to get rid of. And so with that being said, I hope that was, I hope that was more of a breakdown than what I was able to give a projection. So it's just like, when you, now when I see another pretty girl, it's more like, hey, another pretty girl. You know what I'm saying? Before it was like, anytime I would hear the word beautiful, anytime my boyfriend would say another girl is beautiful, that shit would make me so mad. But now it doesn't because I took care of that. I did the shadow work. And I try to, I sat with myself and I was like, why does that trigger me? Why does this particular word trigger me? Why do these particular types of women trigger me? Instead of hating on another girl and making her feel bad, I just chose to dealt with, deal with what's going on within me. And that's what a lot of these women need to do. They need to deal with what's going on within them. Go to therapy. I did that for a whole year straight. A lot of people can't afford therapy. I am fortunate to have the VA. So that's why I was able to do it. I went to um, therapy for like a whole year. For every week for a whole year straight. And I'm telling y'all. <laughs> it's literally just you suppressing something within you. Cause you could be beautiful yourself, you just don't know it yet. 
and I didn't know it yet. So now when I look in the mirror, all I see is I'm, I look good. And I really mean it and believe it this time because I did the shadow work. I took care of that, that whatever was stuck that I suppressed in me, I, I just sat with that and I felt it. Because that's how you heal a trigger. As soon as you feel a trigger come up, you sit with that feeling and you just love and embrace the feeling. The compassion you give to others will be the same compassion you can give to yourself. This is a process that I call reconciliation. Every aspect of us has its positive and negative expression. And enlightenment is about balancing these two polarities by loving both of them equally. Now, loving a negative trait does not mean that you like or enjoy the pain that it causes you. What it means is that you are not judging it as being unacceptable and you are allowing it to express itself as it is. What you fight, you strengthen, and what you resist persists. But the moment that you choose to love unconditionally is the moment that your ego dies. And so loving and accepting both polarities equally moves you beyond duality and therefore beyond patterns of projection. So here's some practical tips to help you overcome projection patterns. Step one is to recognize your triggers. Start looking for those qualities that bother you and others. What triggers you is what needs healing in you. So try to locate the root of that trigger. Why does this particular expression irritate you rather than cause you to feel compassion? Have you ever behaved this way yourself? Because if you hadn't, then it wouldn't be able to trigger you. So try to go as far back in your memory as you can and find the very first time that you made this aspect not okay in yourself. Step two, as cliche as it might be, is to sit with that feeling. You always want to take advantage of the trigger when it occurs, because this is your chance to do the real inner work. Become very interested in this particular feeling. I call it going into scientist mode. Begin to flood that feeling with awareness and notice every detail about it that you can. Your emotions are like clouds and your awareness is like the sun that burns the clouds away with its light. So begin to notice where this feeling manifests in the physical body and begin to study it like a curious scientist. The more awareness you bring to this feeling, the less and less power that it has over you. Step three is to then flood this feeling with love and acceptance. Tell it that it is welcome and you are here to listen to what it has to say. After all, this is a rejected aspect of you from the past, so it may just have some important information to share with you that will help you to heal. Try to imagine if you had been locked away in a dark dungeon and chained to a wall for 20 years. You can see the shadows of feet passing by the crack in the door, and you cry out to be heard, but no one ever comes to your rescue. This is essentially what we have done to parts of ourselves. We have banished them to the dungeons of our subconscious mind long ago, where they will always remain crying out to be reconciled. They will never allow us to have true peace or happiness because they do not have it themselves. Everything is crying out to be made whole. So by shining the light of our awareness on the rejected and suppressed parts of us, we are rescuing them from the dungeons of our subconscious. The pain that we experience comes from not allowing something to have its natural expression. And when we do that, we don't want to allow others to have that expression either. So the next time that you catch yourself responding in ego, in fear or anger or insecurity, rather than judging that action as being not okay, simply have compassion for yourself in that moment. It's just where you are in your journey and that's okay. There's no judgment in that. If you had not first disowned that aspect of yourself, then you would never look upon it with disdain in another person. So if you want to escape this trap of reflexive self-judgment, then you have to begin reconciling these fragments of your lost self back together again through love and compassion. I'm spiritual. So if you're spiritual, you know what I'm saying. You have to love. As, a, as spiritual people, you have to love everything about you because we are made of love. We are literally made of love. So that's why love feels good to us and negative feelings don't feel good to us. 
So when you get triggered, when somebody says something or when you see something and you feel that trigger in your gut feeling and it makes you want to lash out at the person that did that to you instead of doing that because our the way projection works is so crazy like your body's gonna deal with that one way or another it's gonna show you it's gonna show you one way or another hold on so i'm gonna do more videos on projection because i feel like it's very important for us to understand the meaning of it and really breaking it down because that's the true way to heal any type of traumas is to really understand why you feel this way for me i felt triggered by other beautiful women when my boyfriend would say another woman was beautiful when i would see another beautiful girl and i would just be on her instagram for a very long time just admiring how she looks I sat with myself and I really went back to when I made it not okay in me, not where I made it in myself that I wasn't attractive. When I told myself that and I suppressed it. And once I figured out what the actual pinpoint of that was, it like it slowly started to heal so the next time i heard the word beautiful or saw another beautiful girl it didn't hurt as much that is literally the cure to healing any type of trigger just sitting with that feeling and just diagnosing it and really just letting you feel just feel it just feel it it's gonna suck it's gonna hurt it really really is but that's truly the only way to heal it truly is and it will make you feel so much better. It's almost like <laughs> childbirth is so painful, but you know you have to deal with the pain. But once that baby comes out, you guess what? Oxytoxin, oxycotton, whatever you say, it kicks in and you start. You love, you forget all about that pain. <laughs> so it's literally about just ex and just feeling it and just dealing with that and. It will help, trust me. You will come out on the other side being like, why was I feeling that, that about that girl anyway? You'll start complimenting other girls. That's what I do now. Even when I'm at a restaurant, I'll compliment other girls. <laughs> so that's basically it. But, um, it bothers people that we have our own spaces because we trigger people's emotions is basically what i'm trying to say whether they understand the reason why they're being triggered by us or not that's basically what's going on in my opinion and it's it's natural when you when you aren't healed like that to lash out at what made you triggered versus like if you're more advanced in your spiritual journey and your work you know that to heal is not to lash out but to heal do the shadow work and a lot of people don't know that yet so they just react you understand people react in my real life so online i i knew it was going to be no different if not worse like imagine if i showed my face like i'd be wanting to show my face but i just know i trigger people in my real life like and the social media is horrible so I ain't even about to do that to so me and my family because we got some detectives out here that need to be working for the FBI. The way they be finding people's stuff, I swear. So I hope I was able to answer my subscribers' questions. If you guys have any questions that you want me to make videos about, let me know in the comment section. Let me know. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you for listening.